All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. We need to lose 30 pounds in the next 90 days, and we need to do it in a way that's doable and preferably easy. So here's our game plan. Well, we're gonna walk every day, number one. Number two, we're gonna drink a lot of water. And number three, we're gonna avoid sugar like the plague. And number four, if we avoid or don't obey any of those first three rules, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply the two thirds rule, which means we're gonna obey the other two. So if you end up eating sugar, keep drinking water and keep walking. If you end up avoiding your walk, drink water all day and avoid sugar and that's our plan and now the main thing that make exercises like walking the best is to have a fun conversation with your friend and that's where your buddy Jesse comes in so welcome to the walk this is a part of the walk talk vent series sometimes we uh, listen to people and listen to them vent but today you're gonna listen to me vent because that's what I do best I like to complain a lot yeah as you guys know, every single morning in Philadelphia, Houston, Chicago, and Detroit, there's always a bunch of mischief to report on. Today I'm going to tell you a story that should make your blood boil, but for some of you it'll just be old news and it won't have any effect on you at all. There was a five-year-old girl in Houston who shot herself with her stepdad's gun. As you guys know, this happens all around the country on a pretty regular basis. And it leads people to say, let's get rid of the guns. But in reality, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we keep our guns safe because the reality is we're never going to get rid of all the guns. And even if you did get rid of all the guns, the criminals would be the ones to hold on to them because guess what? That's criminal nature. So check this out. In Texas, did you know it's only a misdemeanor if a child gains access to your gun and hurts or kills somebody. That seems like a shame. If your child gets a hold of your gun and they shoot, harm, or kill somebody with it, I believe you should go to jail and it should be a heck of a lot more than a misdemeanor. Jason Wynn had a lengthy record and according to Sheriff Gonzalez of Houston, apparently he had six felony convictions including unlawful possession of a firearm back in 2014. And guess what happened just two short months ago? Another one of these worthless Houston judges gave this guy a small bond and he was bonded out on this same charge, criminal possession of a firearm because criminals aren't supposed to be able to possess firearms, yet they don't obey the laws. Isn't that crazy? So the good news is this five-year-old child that shot herself in the head, by, by the way, is expected to survive. But it leads a lot of questions. One of the questions is from at Rocky M6557. Rocky says, six felonies, question mark. What happened to three strikes and you're out? Thanks, Democrats. Well, three strikes and you're out, I believe, was made famous by California authorities back in the 80s and 90s. And I think they got rid of it. But here's the question I have for you. The reason they got rid of it back in the 80s and 90s was because they always said all these propaganda points that somebody would steal a slice of pizza and they would go to jail or prison for the rest of their lives. I don't know about you, but doesn't that just sound like propaganda based on what we know nowadays? So you got rid of the three strikes rule out in Cal or law out in California because people were stealing pizza? I don't think so. I think what happened is a lot of the wrong people got in charge, if you know what I mean, and they made stupid decisions that do nothing but hurt the people. Holy crap, every dog in the neighborhood is barking today. Why? Must be homeless people running through the alleyways again. So 
So here's the irritating thing. We've talked about Houston judges before. Guys, whenever you have these blue judges, for some reason, they just always love to give the benefit of the doubt to the criminal and victim be damned. So Rocky, I agree with you completely. Should every state have a three strikes rule? Well, when you believe that everybody deserves a second chance, but then they don't necessarily deserve chance three, four, five, six, and seven, they should agree with you. And frankly, I'm on your side. Give people a chance to change themselves. But if they're not gonna change themselves, you know, a tiger or a zebra can't change their stripes. Get rid of them. They don't belong in society. The underscore black underscore sheep 95 says the mother will lie in court and say the firearm was hers. If you want to know something, black sheep, I have a funny feeling that you've nailed it right on the head. I have a feeling that that's exactly what's going to happen. The mom's going to say that was her firearm. The mom's going to make the stepdad sound like he's just the greatest thing ever and that he really cares. And who cares that her daughter is probably going to have trauma from this for the rest of her life. What is it with today's modern day woman where they make the absolute worst decision you possibly can? And here's another thing for dads out there that are fighting for custody of their kid. Here's just another scenario where the courts reward women and it's not always a good choice. Why don't we really start as a society looking at men and asking, do they deserve to be in their child's life and does the mom deserve it? If the dad is still out there, because who knows, the dad could be a bad guy too for all I know. It doesn't look like the mom makes very good choices when it comes to the men and her, her and her daughter's life. So the real question is, if I'm wrong and the actual father is out there, man, you should think, you should try to see if there's a way where you can go after the judge. I'm telling you, we really, Houston, Philly, Chicago, the problem is half the criminals, but the other half of the problem is your judges. If you want to vote Democrat on the national level, there's checks and balances, okay? There's a little defense for making a bad decision on a national level. But when you have states prosecuting attorneys and district attorneys and defense attorneys and the judges, and they're all okay with letting the bad guy back into your society when they know they're just going to do these crimes over and over again, at what point do you have to start holding these judges accountable? It's almost like they're purposely put into your cities to just cause more chaos. It is disgusting. The, the Harris County judges, I'm just going to say it, you guys are one of the worst in the world, let alone the country. Black Sheep, thank you for leaving that comment. By the way, Black Sheep didn't leave that on my comment. They left that on Fox Houston's channel, and I snagged it because I thought it was a great comment. Bridget Hamilton, 6057, writes, What kind of mother subjects her child to this type of person? Once again, Bridget, I agree with you completely. What type of mom does this? But the reality is, women have wanted the bad boy or the bad guy forever. And it's exactly because of this that I think we should have a situation where when fathers want full custody of their children, instead of judges just poo-pooing it and going with mother nature, because I think we can all agree, in, in nature, the child needs to be with the mom. But in, in the earthly realm of things, women nowadays have really not been up to par with the mothers of the past. I'm just gonna say it, you just have to admit it. We live in this world where over the last 50 years, grandparents have been raising these kids anyway. Let's start making a more even keel decision where we really start looking at the character of both the father and mom and let's quit just automatically giving the children to the mom. It's obviously not working out. When things don't work out and you keep doing the same thing over, expecting a different result, what do we call that? We call that insanity. Houston, you guys keep voting in these same judges 
who keep allowing these horrible individuals back out on the street. You know why? It's your fault. You're insane. Hey, I think that'll be the name of this video. Houston is insane. Houston is definitely cursed. And by the way, I grew up in a single family, a uh, single parent household with my mom. There are plenty of good moms out there that teach their kids the right way. So if everything was taken into account, it is my opinion that the mom would still earn custody three out of four times in a righteous way. But I know for a fact that out of every four couples, there's one couple out of the four where it would truly make way more sense to have the kids go with the dad. You know, somewhere in this country over the last 30 or 40 years, we keep hearing that the system is getting more equal. It's really not. Moms are predominantly given custody of their kids. And the modern day women, they just make horrible decisions when it comes to the men in their lives. And if you're a dad and your stepdad's gun ends up making it where your child gets injured, oh my goodness, do you know how much there's a chance this could lead to more stuff. I could see the dad, especially if he's a criminal too, I could see him doing something to the stepdad. And even if he's not criminal, I could still see him doing something to the stepdad. It's really, really a shame. David, Q071Z says, what? Question mark? You mean a criminal doesn't follow your gun laws? I'm shocked. You know, David, you bring up yet again another excellent point. What happens when you take the guns out of society? The only thing that happens is good people are, have no way to defend themselves because that's when bad people take advantage of things. This guy here, this when guy, is a perfect example of how when you try to take away guns from the criminals, they don't respect the laws. And when the judge lets them out on bond two months before this happens, and oh yeah, by the way, this guy has six felonies, I mean, there comes a point where you have to say, the judge is responsible for this. Because obviously Mr. Wen doesn't have the ability to control himself, and the judge knows this, the judge, gosh, if it were up to me, you would be paraded around Houston so people could throw tomatoes at you. Does anybody else think that would be fair? Let's parade the Houston judges and let's let people throw tomatoes at them. And maybe even some feces. I think that would, that would be about what they deserve. These judges are ruining the world. And they are literally just as guilty as the criminal, if you ask me. You know, it's still my thinking that if you went against the grain and if you forced every single citizen to actually own a firearm and you forced them to get annual training, maybe even buy annual training, right? So they're doing it twice a year. You could probably eliminate a lot of the crime. You could also probably eliminate a lot of the natural rudeness that people have towards one another. Whenever people say, let's get rid of the guns, it always amazes me because it's like, wait a minute, is your criminal in the neighborhood? Is he or she going to get rid of their gun? Because the answer is always no. So what you're really saying is, let's have the good people give up their guns. And if a criminal goes into my house, I might just want one of these uh, semi-automatic weapons so that I can shoot multiple criminals rather than them taking me or my family members out. So again, is there a chance, when you're looking at the man or woman in the mirror, is there a chance that you could be wrong? The answer is yes, because you're wrong. I know it seems counterintuitive. Why don't we get rid of the guns? But you know what they do in England? In England, they stab people. They literally get machetes and they go to busy areas and they literally hack multiple people. So the answer is not to limit the weapon selection. That, that has very little effect on the bad guy. The option is to get rid of these judges and to throw these hardened criminals underneath the jail. That's the real answer. And until you get in the, on the same page, we're gonna have these same problems. Here's what Republicans know that Democrats seem to ignore. 
almost all Democrats that end up becoming victims end up voting Republican. What's that mean? In my opinion, it means Democrats lack empathy. If you're sick of seeing this stuff, quit voting for the same people. And that leads us to our last person. At a discreet firm says, think they will give him bond again? How long until he gets out and he gets a brand new gun? Heck, this sounds like the type of guy that every time he gets out, he likes to reward himself with a new gun. And I think you and I both know the answer. Not only is he gonna get bonded, he's probably gonna have a really nice lawyer defend him so he doesn't have to go to prison for very long. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And here's the thing that really is sad. Because she's gonna survive, some judge is probably gonna go easy on this guy. I always thought Texas was really good at getting rid of hardened criminals. Apparently that's only in the red part of Texas. The blue part of Texas doesn't care about victims. And if they don't care about victims, then that only leaves one thing left. They are pro-criminal. You know, sometimes you have to look at your side of the equation and you have to say, damn, I think I'm on the losing team. I think I'm on the wrong team. So again, if you wanna vote blue on a national level, there are checks and balances. It's not so dangerous. But if you wanna vote blue on a local level, the only thing that's gonna change your mind is when your family gets victimized by these people. That's what blows me away. And these impoverished communities are literally hypnotized by these horrible politicians. He or she is behind a gated community where they are hidden from all these travesties. There's some sort of far left, I mean, literally bizarrely far left category where you almost have to wonder, are they against the country? Are they against decency? Because that's what it looks like. I'm telling you, Texas, what you need to do is you need to find a way to let people know about these judges and get them out of office. Every time they do something silly, people think they're the greatest because they're so fair and they're so, they're so decent. These judges and decency don't belong in the same sentence. This is frustrating. And here's the horrible thing. Most people aren't affected by this. It's these impoverished communities where they are affected by this predominantly. Now, someone's gonna say, hey, I don't even know if David Wynn was a part of the poor community. He might've been a part of the rich side of Houston. That's neither here nor there. The problem I have is with the judges. The judges keep giving these small bonds that anybody and their brother can make. And when you give somebody a pay money and get out of jail card, they're going to take advantage of that. But it's not going to reform them. It's not going to change them. They go right back to the same thing. I'm telling you, you know on Monday morning how we watch all the football shows and they tell you what Deshaun Watson did horribly for the Cleveland Browns and they tell you what so-and-so quarterback did horrible for so-and-such team, right? What we ought to do is we ought to look at judges no different. They ought to say, hey, Deshaun Jones from the Houston courts, you've let out 84 people. Out of those 84 people, 78 of them have, have done the same crime and found themselves back in prison. If your record is zero for 80, you shouldn't be a judge. And if you know your record is horrible, if you know you make horrible decisions, at what point do we say, throw the judge in jail? It's criminal. There needs to be some sort of legislature put on the books, some sort of referendum on the books that says, hey, if you're a judge, and you're letting these people out, no matter how many things they have on their mile long rap sheet, you're gonna be held accountable and it's not gonna be a monetary fine. Your butt's gonna be going in jail. That's what we need to do. And if you say to me, hey, they're just doing what they're allowed to do, you don't have to always let the, 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 per, the bad guy out on the minimum bond. You can make it the maximum bond across the board. And these parole boards, you need to be replaced with artificial intelligence. 
because you guys consistently make horrible decisions. And family members, you need to quit fighting for your horrible family members. You are actually part of the problem because you think that your one bad guy family member is actually gonna change his ways. He's not, he's just not. Now that comment's gonna irritate people because almost all of us have some sort of family member that's gone the wrong way. If your family member has a DUI or your family member has parking tickets or shoplifting or whatever, that's one thing. But when your family member is a hardened criminal, just let them stay in there. Quit fighting for the bad guy. You're not fighting for your family member. You're fighting for all the bad guys. We need them out of society. Society is a better place when you can go and enjoy your neighborhood without fear of getting shot. Society is a better place when you don't have to worry as a father that the stepfather to your daughter is gonna have guns out where she can shoot herself. And by the way, this happens a lot. I've even seen videos where people are playing video games while their little toddler is actually playing with their gun right in front of them. I've seen those videos. Here's the crazy thing. The judges know about those videos. Why do they keep letting these people out? And who's putting these judges in these positions? If it's you, stop doing that. Again, there's nothing wrong if you want to be a Democrat. I'm not going to lose my friendship over you. But when you're a Democrat on the national level, that is so much different than being a Democrat on the local level. When you're a Democrat on the local level, you're literally saying, if somebody does something bad to me, I want a judge to give them a second, a third, and a 15th chance. Man, your safety and your life are worth so much more to me than they are to you, evidently. Quit voting for these judges. When you go in to do your voting, vote red, vote the Republican, at least when it comes to crime. My goodness, I'm telling you, it comes across like you don't care. And here's the thing, most Democrats I know care a lot. They want the world to change for the better. But the way they go about it, guys, if you can't tell that's backwards, you're, you guys are part of the reason that this child has a head wound today because you guys are okay with these judges. And if you're a judge and you hear my voice, how come you're not ever on the microphone chastising your fellow judges? It really looks like you guys are all in cahoots. And I'm including the Republican judges in that. Shouldn't one judge say to another, I've only let out 15 criminals over this past year and eight of them are still good. You've let out 80 criminals and all 80 of them are bad. It seems like judges should be proud of their record, yet they never are, unless it's time to reelect them, right? Have a wonderful day. Stay positive. We'll see you tomorrow.